Okay people, so you're hearing great things about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin's booming, altcoins are making 10x, 100x gains left and right. So it's time to throw caution to the wind and headlong into crypto investing, betting the farm so you can get yourself that shiny yellow Lambo that you've always wanted, right? Anybody who's ever had a Bitcoin has one of those, right? Calm down, take a breath. Okay. Take a breath. We are not financial advisors. And it's important you do your own research on any financial decision that you're thinking of making. But we do know a little bit about crypto. We've been in it and covering it since 2016. So we might be able to help give you a steer on some of the pitfalls you can encounter. And there are many. This is still very much the Wild West, although regulation is finally starting to come in and add more security. But there are lots of things that can trip you up. That said, there is also huge potential for gains in this relatively new asset class. And the potential for losses. In more ways than one, I'm afraid. Making bad investments is only part of it. You can do transaction mistakes, bad wallet management, falling victim to hacking scams, phishing, the list goes on and on. And that's what this series of videos is about. How, what, where how you can stay as safe and secure as possible along the way. It's important to understand that there's no one to call in crypto if you lose your funds by accident. It's not like calling the bank and saying, oh, you know that transfer that I sent, it was the wrong address, I put an eight instead of a nine. Can you send it back? No. Simply, it's a roller coaster ride, but it can be rewarding. That's if you've got your head screwed on and your eyes open. So let the new kids on the blockchain be your guide through a perilous landscape which can turn out to be paved with riches. We'll start by comparing crypto to the ordinary financial world. How is it different? It's totally different. It's a new world of digital investing. It's not the same as the ordinary financial markets. The crypto markets can move much, much faster than traditional money or stock markets. And they can be hugely volatile sometimes, right? Yes, that's what you're always warned, that your investments can go down as well as up. The same's true in crypto, and then some. Okay, so what do I get when I buy, for instance, a Bitcoin? Do I need to buy a whole one? Can I buy part of a Bitcoin? Well, to start with, Bitcoin is the granddaddy of cryptos and the most famous. You can buy a whole one, or you can buy tiny parts of one called Satoshis. It's a digital store of value, and like I said, the price will fluctuate. What you get when you buy one is simply a public address that you can give out to receive funds, and an encrypted private key, a digital string of numbers, like one you'd get when you bought software that you would never, ever, ever share with but anyone. It's a complicated string of numbers. It's not one, two, three, four, that's for sure. It's a very complicated string of numbers, and it's one you will never be able to remember unless you're some sort of genius. But you never give this to anyone, even your dear old mum. Not that she'd know what to do with it, to be honest. Lose it and you've lost your money. It's that simple. Okay, so you can't put your Bitcoin in a box or you can't hang it on a wall like a share, share certificate? No, you can keep hold of your key. I mean, you can write it down. Of course you can. But in the end, most people keep their Bitcoins or Satoshis or any other cryptocurrency in a digital wallet and make sure it's really secure and backed up. Like I've said, and I'll say again and again and again, you lose your keys, you've lost your money. Okay, so how many cryptocurrencies are there apart from Bitcoin and how do I know what one to invest in? Well, like we said before, Bitcoin is the best known cryptocurrency because it's the original one. But there are other what people call altcoins available. For example, Ethereum, Ripple, Chainlink. Can you do 30 seconds on each to give some context? I certainly can. First of all, Bitcoin, like we said, the granddaddy, is a digital global money system that's based on strings of numbers, which because they're entered into a digital ledger known as blockchain, make up a thing of value. You can own it, it's stored in a digital wallet, which is an app on a computer or a mobile device, and you can send Bitcoin or Satoshis, the little parts of one, to other people. And each time you do, the transaction is entered into the blockchain and it can't be changed. When the Bitcoin changes hands again, then it's added to the ledger, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it's entirely digital. Entirely digital. I'm going to say it again. Lose the numbers, the key, and you lose your Bitcoin. You lose your money. What about the Ether on Ethereum? 
Well, Ether is a cryptocurrency on the Ethereum network. It's the second and most popular crypto on the marketplace. So it's just like Bitcoin, but not Bitcoin. Mm, not quite. Ethereum is an open source platform which uses blockchain, so users can train goods and services with each other. It was designed as a digital way to cut out the need for middlemen, agents and so on. And the Ether is the cryptocurrency that's used on the platform. That means it has a value, like Bitcoin, and can be traded as a cryptocurrency. You can trade it on other online exchanges and it's stored, again, like Bitcoin, in digital wallets. So why would you choose Ether over Bitcoin? I can't tell you that one is better than the other. They are completely different. Bitcoin trades for more, for example, per coin than Ether, at the moment at least anyway, but you can buy Ether as an investment. It's a bit like choosing different shares in different financial instruments in the traditional world of finance. Each instrument is different, but the ultimate aim is to increase the value of the initial amount of money that you put in. You've got Chainlink, which is a crypto that's used to get people to take real world data so that they can create smart contracts which run on blockchains. Chainlink is a utility token which is usually defined as a cryptocurrency that's issued to help fund the development of that crypto or some kind of technology or business, and then can be used to buy goods or services that are offered by the issuer of the crypto. Any more? Well, there are many more. In fact, there are thousands. But there's one more I think that's worth mentioning, and it's called Ripple XRP. Now, this has been really popular over the last few years or so. It's a real-time gross settlement system, currency exchange and remittance network for financial transactions. Okay, can you explain that a bit more? <sighs> it's a thing and it's a service like Chainlink, which means it's a utility token, something that can be used and so has a value to the people who use it. And the XRP coin is both an investment in that system and a token that can be traded. Again, it's a bit like shares, only it's a crypto. And it's the third largest crypto by market cap currently, right now. So there is a choice out there and it's not just Bitcoin. Yes, the world of crypto is growing all the time, but it's important to do your own research. Just because someone down the pub tells you that a cryptocurrency is gonna be worth something, it doesn't mean it's worth anything. Many projects have come and gone in a puff of smoke. Some took a while, some crashed and burned really quickly. The point is that Bitcoin and Ethereum have been around for a long time. So if you're starting out, it makes sense to go for something that's been proven to have some longevity in the market. Though of course, we say again, we're not handing out any investment advice. We can't, legally. We're just letting you know what's what. If you really want to go deep down the rabbit hole, we made a whole documentary on this and you can click on the link above now. Okay, so I choose the currency and then do I put in 100% of my savings in it? Definitely not. Let me be plain and simple about this. Only put as much money into crypto as you are willing to lose. That doesn't sound encouraging. I know, but you've got to be realistic. It's highly unlikely that you will lose everything, but like I said, this is a world that's got regulation, but not as much as traditional financial services. The government isn't going to guarantee a percentage of your savings in crypto, no one is. And there's a higher possibility for fraud and hacking in this purely digital world. Okay, so how much would you put in? I can't tell you that again, but I would always say a very small percentage of your savings. Don't bet the farm, or the house, or the houseboat, or anything else. That is a fool's errand. Say what you mean, Ash. Well, if you know me, it's best to be upfront and honest. Like we've said, we're not advising you to invest in crypto, we're just giving you the facts about doing so. So, is this a long-term thing or a short-term thing? Again, it's up to you. Some people like to have crypto because it's so different, which means that if the fiat currencies collapse, then at least there'll be some value in crypto. But like I must stress, it's up to you. Don't put all of your eggs in any one basket. So buy it, keep it, trade it. Up to you. Some people trade in crypto every day, others leave it and wait to see where the market goes. It's called hodling, which stands for hold on for dear life. If you're interested in crypto, you need to know what it is, how it works and what the risks are. Now that's a lot of information coming at you, so here are some key takeaways from this episode. There are lots of different cryptocurrencies out there, all with different functions. Crypto is very different to the traditional world of finance. It's much more volatile in price. 
It's not as regulated or safe as traditional finance. There are many opportunities to lose your funds if you're not very careful. Only invest what you can afford to lose. I think you've outlined those things very well. Well, I thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so if after that you think crypto is for you, then the next thing we need to know is how do you buy crypto safely? And that's what our next video in the series is about. So check it out. Please do subscribe and share and tell us below what you think. We're trying to make this series of videos to give people who are new coming into crypto the kind of tools they need to avoid making mistakes. Please talk to us, subscribe to the channel and come back for video two on how to buy safely.